Today I'm sharing how to tie fabric and dip it in an indigo vat to create unique and creative designs on your fabric. By the end of this video, you will know how to prep your fabric for the indigo vat, how to tie it, and how to dip it in indigo, and then what to do to be able to reveal your beautiful designs. Hey Sugar Snaps, my name is Brittany. If you're new to the channel, welcome in. I am a basket weaver, natural dyer, and fiber crafts person, and I love sharing the skills that I enjoy here on YouTube and on my website, textileindy.com. For more information, check the description below. I have all the tools and materials for this video linked in a blog post down there, as well as more information about my website, textileindy.com. To get started with this shibori project, you're going to need some sort of cotton fabric to dip in into your indigo dye and to do the shibori on. I'm working with this cotton duvet cover. It's a queen size, so I will be working with a lot of fabric here. I also have swatches of cotton fabric that I've pre-scoured and I'm going to use these as samples to sample out a couple different styles of the tying. I also have a collection of screws, bolts, different pieces of hardware that tie the fabric around. So as my prop, you could also use marbles or something small round that you can tie around. These metal discs that I'm going to play around with on my samples to see how they turn out. 100% polyester thread and I have two different weights. I have a sewing thread weight and then a leather sewing thread weight. These are great for working with the indigo because the indigo won't dye the polyester and therefore it won't bleed into the areas where the thread is wrapped around. That will act as a resist so the indigo can't get into those areas. So your first step is going to be to prepare your fabric for indigo dyeing and I have a full tutorial on scouring in the description below as well as up here in the little eye. Watch that before you start your shibori to ensure that your fabric is fully prepared to absorb as much indigo as possible and get a quality result. I want to do three different test samples before I start tying my duvet cover to just kind of see what the designs look like in the fabric before I choose what my design is going to be for my duvet cover. So this first one, I'm using this larger swatch. I'm going to use this larger round object, stick this in the center, and then take a piece of the thread. I'm using this heavy duty polyester thread. I'm going to bundle up the corners like I'm making a little package and then tie this around like so. And you can, of course, dive in. If you're not dyeing something specific, you could just dive into the process and not worry about doing test samples. But if you're dyeing something that's a little more valuable, like my duvet cover, uh, I do always like to do a few test samples to just get an idea of what it's going to look like, especially if you've never done this process before. So I'm tying that in a knot. So I wrapped it around several times there and then tied it in a knot so it wouldn't slip. And now I'll cut off the excess, leaving some tails so that I can access that later to open it up. For this second swatch, what I'll do is pick one of these bolts and I'll use this large guy here and I'm going to set the head in the fabric, cut another piece of the thread and bring the fabric around this. Lay this thread over the end and then wrap tightly around the base of that screw and the more you cover the screw with the thread the more resist happens wherever the thread touches essentially doesn't get dye because there was the white part or the thread resists it. So then I'll loop this around my finger, send the end through that loop and pull tight. Do the same thing again. So I'm looping it over my finger, sending the end through that loop. Oops and pull tight. And I'm going to leave this tail so that I can sink this into the indigo. So it looks like that. Third, and I'm just going to poke the end and create a little bundle like this. 
so that I have a point, and then take threads, wrap them around the base of that bundle, pull tight so they're going opposite directions, and then kind of run that around the bundle towards the tip, and then meet it with the other end, so I'm kind of crisscrossing the fabric, and then I'll tie it towards the end. And you can do this as organized or not as you want. I just haphazardly bundled it and I have some crisscrosses there. Now that I have my three sample bundles, I'm going to test these in the indigo vat. So let's go dip these. <music> dried samples of the um, shibori that we just dipped. This is the one that I just twined up just with thread. This is the one that I wrapped in around the bolt. And then this guy is the one wrapped around that circle metal piece. The design that I want to use on my duvet cover is this guy, the bolt wrapped fabric because it has a nice florally abstract design and there's more blue showing up here. This one, I think this lower half when I folded it, it got folded in like that so that there's a lot of white on that side and I'm not sure how to control that with the um, bundle effect. So the bolt looks like a good option to get more of an even look. I am going to try to not push the bolt so hard into the fabric though because um, it did make a bubble. So when you're tying your piece, just tie it loose, tie the end into the fabric loosely so that you're not stretching the fabric out as you dye it. Um, but then you do want to tie the actual tying rather tight to do the resist. Now that I've chosen the design that I'm going to use, I'm going to start laying out where I want to place the bolts and screws on my duvet cover. So I have folded this into quarters so that it fits better on my table here. And I'm going to use that to help me lay things out somewhat evenly. You could mark your pattern locations with a pencil if you wanted to, but once it's tied, you won't be able to access the pencil marking. And once it's dyed after that point, it won't wash out or has a potential to not completely wash out. So I'm going to use safety pins to mark the center point of where I'm going to tie. Point of marking where you're tying before you start just tying is that then you can more systematically place your design. So my middle point, I'm going to put a safety pin right here so that I get one right in the middle and then work out from there. And the way I'm going to tie this piece is through both layers of the duvet cover, so both sides of the duvet cover as one. I'm going to lay this out in kind of a brick offset pattern. If you're working on a different type of material or a smaller piece, you can lay your designs out however you want. You don't even have to mark out where your placement's going to be if you don't want to. This is just a way for me to get it to systematically flow. And I'm going to use this pole as a guide to mark along so that I end up with semi-straight lines. I did a quick check to make sure that all of the safety pins are placed where I would want them. So now I'm going to start tying. So I'm gonna take this guy, start on this edge right here, and start with one of these. Undo the safety pin so that I can mark that spot. And I'm going to place the bolt on this side, wrap it up like this, and then tie it from the other side. And again, I'm going through both layers of the duvet cover. I'm going to lay this over and wrap.
and then tie this up. One down, 80 more to go. Now I think it's time for a bit of a time lapse and getting all of these tied. So let's go do that. Hey Sugar Snaps, if you're enjoying the process of creating some shibori tied fabric, leave the word blue in the comments below. Let me know that you're being inspired or enjoying my video. I'm going to take this and soak it in some warm water for 30 minutes, and that's just to open up the fiber and prepare it so that it takes on the dye evenly when I dip it in the indigo. It's so heavy. With your fabric dampened and having soaked for about 30 minutes, you're ready to dip in the indigo. This is the exciting part, seeing the dip happen. If you want a tutorial on how to dip into an indigo vat, check the description below. I have a video all about that. Thank you. 
is time to cut all of the ties and see how this thing turned out. Phoebe's joining me this morning and shedding all everywhere. Thank you very much, Phoebe, for your contribution to this project. So after dying, dipping this for the second time, I went ahead and rinsed it out and hung dry it. It was a really warm day. So hung dry it outside to allow it to dry because I wanted to open everything up once it was dry so that I can see the actual color. So to build up anticipation, I'm going to cut, lift out the metal pieces, but I'm not going to spread it out until I've cut all of them because I want to see everything revealed all at once. To cut the ties, I'm going to come in and where I tied the knot, just cut that point and untwist it. Try to get that loosened. I'm going to try to reuse these bits of string because otherwise they would just go in the trash. So now I'm gonna spend the next eternity untying these. The last few ties to cut you. I'm getting pretty excited to see how this turned out. If you are interested in getting more information in textile and fiber arts, sign up for my email update list. I send out a twice a month email with resources, information, new content that I put out on the blog and on my YouTube channel. And it's just a great way to get involved in the textile indie community space and um, learn more about fiber arts. So check the description below for a link to sign up to that. I think I got them all. I'm going to do one more check because I think it would be really cool to just lay it out, open it up, and see all of the designs open up at once. There's 81 tied bundles on here. 81, that's a lot. Got all the metal out, now we're gonna try that again. Wow, that's looking pretty cool. Lots of different sizes. This is pretty cool on this side too. Just a little bit less deep color. Well, I'm quite pleased with how this turned out. It needs a, another washing to make sure that I have all the indigo out of it. And that will also help level out these, lift the, the mountains where I put the metal pieces. They're a little bit stretched out from the tying. So putting it through a wash cycle and the dry cycle in my washer and dryer will help to neutralize these little shapes. I have several indigo vat dyeing videos I've done recently with pre-reduced indigo and I've combined all of those videos and resources and the tools and materials I'm using in these videos in a blog post on my website. You can find the link to that in the description below. Be sure to check that out if you want more indigo dyeing resources, ideas, projects, that kind of thing. Next week I'll be sharing another indigo dyeing project, a little hint it involves flower shapes. So be sure to check back for that project. And thanks so much for joining me today for the Shibori Dying Dubai cover project. This was really fun. I'm super excited to share this project with you and the results. Uh, thanks for being part of the textile indie community by watching my channel. Be sure to like this video if you found it inspiring or helpful in some way and subscribe so that you get notified whenever I put out a new video here on YouTube. Thanks for being here and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!
while Phoebe is enjoying the duvet cover. Thank you.